Hello. In this video, we will go over session setup and audio routing in Pro Tools when using DTS Creator. In this example, the session is broken up into three units. There's dialogue, including a bed and eight objects, music with its bed and eight objects, and effects, including objects and some multi-channel objects. On this end, there are several aux tracks set up with DTS Creator Renderer Input plugins. Before we start routing audio, let's have a look at the I.O. page. There are two eight-channel paths for monitoring the output of the DTS renderer, some metering paths, and this 712 path named DTS. This path is used to ensure delay compensation can do its job. Next are the object input paths. Let's route the output for our DTS monitoring. This session has two DTS monitor plugins, allowing for 16 channels of output. I'm sequentially assigning these to the monitor outputs we saw at the top of the bus tab in the IO setup menu. This session is set up with 7-1 beds and associated stereo overhead beds, dialogue for music and effects. We're going to sum those bed elements before we route them to a renderer input. I'll start by assigning the 7-1 portion of each bed to the 7-1 portion of a path called bed sum. Then I'll do the same for the stereo overhead beds, assigning them to the subpath overheads in the bed sum bus. Now we can collect that bed sum path and get it into the DTS creator renderer using some aux input tracks. On this 7.0.2 aux input, I can grab everything except the LFE portion of the summed bed. Then the LFE can come in on a corresponding mono aux input. In this example, the LFE channel has been separated out, so a low pass filter can be inserted on the track. Now that the bed has been summed, let's send it to the renderer input. In this session, the bed renderer input is on a 7.1.2 aux input track named Bedmaker. I'll use the path named bed input for this routing. First, the 7.0.2. Then the post filter LFE. The DTS renderer input plugin instance on this track already has the bed assigned toggle switch engaged. We assign the input for this track to the bed input bus. Now we have a continuous audio path from the beds to the bed summer to the DTS renderer input. Now let's assign our objects. We'll sequentially assign the first eight objects, dialog one through eight, to object input. One, objects one through eight. Ended at 8. Music objects will start at 9. We'll sequentially assign all those. Now 17 through 24 will be the effects objects. These last three effects tracks are multi-channel We'll get to those in a minute. We still need to route the object audio to renderer inputs. These are three renderer input tracks, eight objects in each. Let's assign those sequentially to our object renderer inputs, starting with one through eight. So we've got one through eight, nine to 16, 17 to 24. Now there's a stereo object over here. 
We could continue sequentially and assign this to object input 25, or we could use a dedicated path for a multi-channel object. In this case, it's called multi-channel A. So we'll assign it to the stereo subpath of multi-channel A. There's a corresponding renderer input track for multi-channel A. So we'll assign its input to multi-channel A. For the next multi-channel panner, it's a 5.0 panner. That's what it looks like. So let's assign that to multi-channel input B. So there's a 5.0 path for that. There it is. And then on the corresponding renderer input, make those match. And we'll do something similar for the 7.0. For the 7.0 panner, we'll just move on to multi-channel path C. So we'll assign that to multi-channel C, 7.0. And the corresponding multi-channel C, 7.0 on this render input. For delay compensation to calculate correctly, all tracks with renderer input plugins need to be routed to the same bus. For that, I'm using the path that we called DTS. There are seven renderer input tracks in this session. We'll make sure they're all going to that same path. Walking through this, it seems like a lot of routing, but once you have a template that works for you, most of the routing will never change. A session much like this is included with the installation of the plugin set. That same DTS path needs to be assigned as the input path for any track that has a DTS monitor plugin. We'll go over plugin delay compensation in another tutorial. The hardware selection in the DTS Creator Settings window can also affect delay compensation. It's important to go to the Settings menu on a DTS Creator plugin to ensure it's set to the correct hardware type. Another good practice is to make sure that your playback engine is set to 1024 samples. When you go to export a file, you'll get a reminder if you forgot to change this setting. This concludes the video, Audio Routing for DTS Creator.